One of the toughest decisions that a startup can make is to pivot. Netflix transformed from renting DVDs to streaming. Shopify started as a website for selling snowboarding equipment. YouTube was meant to be a dating site. In Silicon Valley, pivoting has been a norm among startups, and Hopper was one of them. Today, Hopper is valued at $3.5 billion as a result of their unique mobile-first and data-focused strategy. Their main selling point is the price prediction algorithm that will tell you the best time to purchase a flight ticket or book a hotel. This unique form of interaction with customers compared to other online travel agencies and meta search engines has brought Hopper immense success. Let's explore how Hopper managed to reinvent the business for the mobile age and how it keeps succeeding at it. Hopper was founded in 2007 by two travel industry pros. These former Expedia employees, Frederick Lalonde and Joost Auerkirk, noticed that after travel became digital and online, travel agencies put all travel inventory online. Not much had been done to push the consumer value proposition beyond that. So their idea was to take a giant step forward and aggregate all this travel data on a level that had never been done before. The term big data was only coined in 2005. So in 2007, there was little to no understanding of how and for what purpose you could derive value from all the data that's available online. Lalonde and Auerkirk wanted to build a search engine of sorts to help people discover all there is to know about a destination they're going to, organized and in one place. For example, by searching Rio de Janeiro, users could get an overview of activities and attractions, places to eat and stay, details on flights and prices, plus photos, maps, directions, and so on. It took them six years and 12 million in funding to unveil the alpha version of the website. Why so long? Building data infrastructure to power this database of travel information was far from easy. Hopper realized that a lot of valuable travel information can be found in blogs, where people share their travel experiences, often not even that well ranked on Google. So they had to build proprietary technology to find those websites across the web and identify whether it's been written by a real human and not a content farm. Then, those selected travel blogs would be reviewed by human editors, so only the most useful and interesting information native to Hopper's own website. By 2014, Hopper.com was finally open to the public, adding 200 new pieces of content a day. But when Hopper soft launched, their travel blog aggregation wasn't what fascinated the customers the most. It was their data capabilities. Hopper was collecting and analyzing tons of data. So a small team was tasked to prepare and publish some research on the website, specifically about pricing. They shared info on buying cheaper festival tickets or how you can save on college campus visits or the expected travel demand from the U.S. to China for the Chinese New Year. In 2014, the New York Times published an article marveling at the level of detail and transparency of Hopper's research compared to others. The article was also highlighting one seemingly small feature, the airfare prediction algorithm that would tell people the best day to buy their ticket. Initially, the team had expected that customers would use the website to search for, say, tickets to Rome for $300, and the system would find some across the web. But in the process of building the engine, they realized that people have much more anxiety about the time they should purchase a ticket. So they turned their whole idea around and started offering data on when the tickets will cost $300. Using historical and real-time information, they've managed to make pricing forecasts up to a year in advance with 95% accuracy. 
The New York Times article went viral and attracted a million users to Hopper's website in a day. An instant success. But then, in only three weeks, Hopper did the unthinkable. They shut down the website and then built an app. Sounds crazy, right? Companies typically pivot when there's nothing left to do. You might as well try something crazy since you've got nothing to lose. This wasn't the case with Hopper. Besides, in 2014, less than 20% of people used smartphones to actually book travel. But there was something else that only CEO Fred Lalonde knew. At the time, he was also on the board of Make My Trip, India's largest OTA. When in the 2010s, cheap Android phones were becoming enormously popular in India. He noticed that the mobile travel booking there skyrocketed to 70% of all bookings. He made the bold assumption that this wave of mobile popularity would be worldwide and that Hopper must ride that wave. And he was right. Today, the Hopper app boasts 100 million users. Why does Hopper's mobile-first strategy work so well? Across Southeast Asia, where mobile adoption has always been the highest in the world, consumers have long been living in the mobile-first world. Social media, gaming, and shopping there is often offered directly to smartphones without first launching on a desktop. Hopper was one of rare North American businesses that followed the same strategy. And there are two main elements to it. Not having the marketing budgets of big players, Hopper chose to focus on retention, not user acquisition. And the mobile-first strategy helped them with that. Hopper took a different approach from big OTA brands. They offer a simple interface where users pick dates, review available propositions, and select which hotels or flights to track. Then, the app sends a push notification that it's time to book. Hopper invented their own flow that adapts to the way consumers already interact with their mobile devices. They send on average 42 push notifications to a user before the final price drop happens, just to let them know about the price changes and keep them in the loop. The result? Almost 90% of Hopper sales come from push notifications. While other businesses create anxiety and a sense of urgency with their buy now message, Hopper does the opposite. Most of the time, they're telling customers not to buy something, cultivating a personal connection. 50% of their sales come from repeat bookers after all. Because we have that great retention, we actually don't have to wait until someone is searching for a flight to acquire them. We can acquire them a few months uh, earlier than that and then just keep them engaged. And the second main element Hopper incorporates is gamification. Pin Duo Duo is a Chinese shopping app, Alibaba's biggest rival. And Hopper's Fred Lalonde was truly inspired by its gamification features. On Pin Duo Duo, for example, users are encouraged to log in every day to water a fruit tree. When it's grown, the fruit is transformed into discounts and deals. Hopper has tried something similar. So we did this crazy thing where we made a digital pinata, and you would, you would buy it anywhere between $5 and $14. The, there's bigger pinatas. And when you bought it, the bunny would come and beat it, and stuff would fall. And so you would get some carrot cash, some vouchers. We sold more pinatas that day than flights. <laughs> Lalonde believes that the East is ahead of the West in terms of understanding customer behavior, and that this is the way to appeal to Gen Z. Hopper's success is all the proof you need that he's on the right track. Today, Hopper is very different from the way it was in 2007 or even 2014. The company has been continuously adapting. Hopper widened their financial propositions, building on their fintech products. For example, 
Their price freeze feature allows users to pay a fee to be able to purchase tickets for a lower price at a later time. They've also introduced a flight disruption guarantee service, where Hopper will cover the ticket cost or refund you if the flight has been canceled or delayed for more than an hour. Today, users can also purchase the option to cancel for any reason, or even leave for any reason, and book a different hotel with rebooking costs covered. And they're also letting other businesses use these proprietary features with Hopper Cloud. Now travel agencies, airlines, hotels, and corporate travelers can integrate their toolset via an API and provide greater flexibility and increased conversion rates. One of the more controversial moves has been the recent layoff of 30% of the company's staff. The reason was simple. After running a lot of initiatives that were not revenue generating, the company tried to shift the focus from growth to profitability, especially in preparation for going public in the next few years. As you might imagine, Hopper isn't planning to stop disrupting the travel market, and their story might inspire you to do the same. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe for more content analyzing and explaining the travel industry. We'll see you soon.